Dan Rin Conation Chapter Dan Rin and Asian Yersujin hadn't spent the whole two years solely within Sayana's Hall, even though it wasn't as long as the time he had spent in Sayana's Hall, he had also stayed on the 8th and 6th floors for quite some time, the 8th floor held the Hall of Scorching Heat and the 6th floor held the Hall of Space, if Eugene had been a bit greedier, he might have even wanted to spend some time in the Hall of Heavenly Punishment on the 7th floor and the Hall of Icy Chill on the 8th floor, but instead of needlessly spreading himself thin, reaching for this and that, Eugen had decided that he needed to concentrate on a few chosen topics. The fire magic on the eighth floor was relatively simple yet powerful, although the difficulty of the magic varied depending on how he wanted to control the flames, as long as he could first ignite some flames, he would be able to cast spells of sufficient power, flames on their own were just that powerful, volatile, and destructive, however, the floor of fire spells was that they required an absurd amount of mana, and the hall of scorching heat on the eighth floor stored the spells of the one who was the most powerful fire wizard in all of magic's history, Eugene held a personal interest in the blink spell on the sixth floor in the hall of space, and he also needed to learn spatial magic to use the cloak of darkness properly, the fruits of his study on the eighth and sixth floors had proven more than adequate, so you're finally out, a voice greeted Eugene as he stepped onto the first floor of Akron. Akron. A middle-aged wizard who had been seated there got up to meet him. He waved his hand at Eugene while passing on a friendly smile that seemed a touch too enthusiastic. Was there something else you needed from me? Eugene asked exasperatedly. This was Tremple Vizardo, as the commander of Aroth's court wizards. He had shown himself to be extremely interested in Eugene. Strictly speaking, Trample's blatant attempts to curry favor was also a way of conveying Crown Prince Hanin's friendly intentions. Since their first meeting with Eugene, they didn't hide the fact that they wanted to pull him closer, visit, for a better Uso experience is a Eugene. I'm always asking you to come and have a meal with me, but since you are so busy, we haven't eaten together even once, have we? Trample asked chidingly. Eugene replied, I've already eaten. Even though I've heard that you haven't been out of Akron in the last nine hours, there's no way Sir Eugene isn't aware of the rule that eating and drinking are not allowed in Akron, Tremple confidently declared. It looked like the director must have spilled the beans. Eugene glanced at the closed door to the director's office before replying, It's just that I ate a bit too much at breakfast. If I had at least been able to move my body around a bit more actively, I would have digested it all already but since I've just been sitting and reading, I haven't been able to digest anything. You're saying that you weren't able to digest anything after nine hours? Trample asked skeptically, what's so hard to believe? In any case, let's put off getting a meal until next again with the next time. Sir Eugene, I didn't want to say this, but I've heard next time so many times that it feels like those words are getting stuck in my ear. I simply don't have an appetite right now. Although Tremple's gaze grew piercing, Eugene didn't change his reply. It was obvious what this old wizard was trying to talk to him about, promising him an important position in the court wizards and such. Earth's court wizard's corpse was considered one of the best magic corpse on the entire continent. The treatment the members received was correspondingly excellent, and many wizards wished to become a member, though no matter how prestigious or impressive it might be, in the end, it was still a military force, and during a time of peace like the one they had now, it was just another public office. Do they think I'm crazy? Eugene scoffed to himself. Eugene was only 19 years old. He didn't want to get tied down somewhere so soon. And among all his choices, he especially disliked the idea of joining a military force. No matter how peaceful the world was, an army was still an army, although it would be easy to relate on the names of the Lionheart clan and Crown Prince Hanin to get by in the hellish Erechu-based system that was an army, Eugene still wouldn't be able to live as freely and as comfortably as he did know. The latest episodes are on the website. Why is he trying to avoid such a great opportunity? Tremple thought to himself as he felt frustrated. Could he truly have accepted an offer from somewhere else? Such thoughts caused Tremple to become nervous. Yes. Eugene was currently the disciple of the Red Tower Master, Lovellian, although the position of a Tower Master wasn't hereditary. If Eugene's talent was paired with Lovellian's teachings and the influence of the Lionheart clan, 
he would be sure to rise to the position of the Red Tower Master. Trample couldn't allow this to happen, or Earth's Towers of Magic and the Royal Palace might be in a cooperative relationship, but they weren't truly of ornament. Trample wanted to drag Ejin into the Court Wizard's corpse by whatever means necessary, if he could achieve that. It would be easy for them to obtain the cooperation of the Lionheart clan with Eugene's background. There's no way it could be that old Foji, Generic. Trample decided. Generic Osman was the Green Tower Master. Trample didn't believe that Jisa could have swayed Eugene. Just think about it. When Eugene first arrived in Ekron two years ago, Generic and the head of the Wizards Guild had been the only two to pose granting Eugene an entrance pass until the last moment. It was understandable why the head of the Wizards Guild had taken such a position, although it may have also been due to a question of fairness, there were surely personal feelings involved as well. The Black Wizard who had gotten close to Ward had been a member of the Wizards Guild, though Balzac, the Black Tower Master, had been able to profess that he had had nothing to do with the incident. This left the head of the Wizards Guild in a position where he couldn't say the same. In a rough, where the power lay firmly in the hands of the Towers of Magic, the strength of the Wizards Guild could not but be diminished. Most perceived the Wizards Guild to be made up of a bunch of Ameto Wizards who weren't able to join one of the Towers of Magic, and unfortunately, they couldn't really deny the reality of this. But if that was the case, why had Generic also opposed it? The answer was simple, because the one who had recommended Eugene was Lovellian, 300 years ago. When the wise Sienna had served as the Green Tower Master, two of the three disciples that she had taken had remained in the Green Tower of Magic, while the remaining disciple transferred over to the Red Tower of Magic. These days, Earth's many wizards revered the wise Sienna as their great master. However, Generic and Lovellian were the only ones who could legitimately claim to be part of Sienna's line of succession. The two of Sienna's disciples who chose to remain in the Green Tower of Magic got married, had a child, and passed down their magic unto him. This child was the former Green Tower master and Generic's father. There was no way that Generic's family would be on friendly terms with the Red Tower of Magic. According to them, the third disciple's audacity to leave the Green Tower of Magic where their master had taught and take root in a different Tower of Magic bordered on blasphemy. Generic had inherited this line of succession through his blood and hated Lovellian even more. If Lovellian didn't exist, then only Generic would be able to claim the legitimacy of the inheritance Sienna had passed. Down to her disciples, this would grant his bloodline a power that could not be ignored in this magical kingdom that worshipped Sienna, so Lovellian's very existence could be considered a thorn in Generic's eye. This annoyance, Lovellian also happened to be on excellent terms with the Patriarch of the Lionheart clan. Due to this, Lovellian had even taken the Lionheart's eldest son into the Red Tower and given him special treatment. When that eldest son was caught doing something foolish, the adopted son of the Lionheart's family had been sent to replace him. That was why Generic had taken the opposing side on that issue. But after Lovellian took Eugene as his disciple, Generic began paying Eugene renewed attention. There was truth in the saying that in most cases, the other person's share always seems bigger. So out of jealousy, Generic hoped to somehow persuade Eugene to leave the Red Tower of Magic, apart from the Green Tower of Magic and the Court Wizard's Corpse. Many others were interested in Eugene, the White Tower of Magic, Melkith, who had had the Cloak of Darkness taken from her for a whole nine years, hoped to somehow persuade Eugene to allow her to borrow Winnie again. Or... If not that, she hoped to at least convince him to return the Cloak of Darkness, but these materialistic desires weren't the only reason she was paying attention to him, as Eugene had shown that he could freely control mid-level Wain spirits. As for the Black Tower of Magic, although it wasn't openly stated, rumors had spread among the Tower Masters that Bolsek was interested in Eugene. Due to the incident with Uward, the hostility between the Lionheart clan and the Black Tower of Magic had only deepened, so it seemed that Balsak somehow wanted to improve their relationship. Only the Blue Tower of Magic was showing complete indifference to Eugene. Trample decided to change the subject. Ahem, Sir Eugene, well is your thesis going smoothly? Yes, it is, Eugene replied curtly. If you wish, I can help you review it, Trample eagerly offered. Of course, I'm fully aware that your teacher, the Red Tower Master, 
is already in charge of your review. However, the more advice you receive, the better. Right. Eugene started to reject him, although I'm grateful for your offer. Hold on. Don't refuse just yet. It feels a bit embarrassing to say this myself, but in the end isn't the Red Tower of Magic specialized in summoning magic? Not only am I good at summoning magic, but I'm also capable in battle magic. After all, it's not like I'm the commander of the court wizards for nothing, Trample quickly added, my advice is sure to be different from the advice given by the Red Tower Master, who specializes in summoning magic. Though that might be the case, it's not like Sir Trample knows what kind of this is I've been preparing, right? Eugene asked doubtfully, that's because the only one you've shown it to is the Red Tower Master. These words threatened to escape Trample's throat, only for him to swallow them back down with a gulp. Trample laughed, hey hey, I might not know what it is, but I can find out just by reading it right. I am just as keen on the guidance of juniors as any of the Tower Masters. I also regularly publish theses with the Magic Society of Aroth, and I've reviewed the theses of my juniors on many occasions. I'm grateful for your offer, but really, it's fine, Eugene rejected him once more. Sir Trample, if I accept your offer after having already gotten to this point, I'm afraid that I would be committing a great disrespect to my teacher, Master Lovellian. I am, but I've heard that the Red Tower Master's heart is as broad and as deep as the sea. Trample flattered the absent Lovellian. Rather than being offended, I'm sure he would be pleased that you're seeking guidance from a senior scholar. If that's the case, allow me to ask Master Lovellian for permission directly. Hey now, why do you need to do that? Instead, let's just do this. You and me, why don't we just keep it a secret between us? You won't have to feel any stress from confronting your master, and the Red Tower Master won't lose any face either. As for me, I'm just happy to be contributing to your research. Please excuse me, Eugene quickly slipped past Trample without listening any further. Trample reached out to Eugene with a face full of regret. But in the end, he sighed and shook his head. Trample silently cursed to himself. Darn it. If King Hell, Eugene had also spat out a curse as soon as he got some distance away from Trample. If he said that he didn't want to do it, then Trample should just accept it. Why continue to pester him like this? Since he doesn't know about my progress with the Eternal Hole, it's still only at this level. If he found out the truth, he might even try to crawl through my bedroom window. Eugene shuddered at this thought. The only ones who knew that Eugene had managed to replicate the Eternal Hole with the White Flame formula were Lovellian and Mer. If Eugene were an art wizard at Trample's level, upon replicating the Eternal Hole, anyone with sufficient mana sensitivity would be able to detect the state of his magic and the revised application of his mana, however, the Bring Flame formula that Eugene had created appeared no different from the White Flame formula until someone saw him casting a spell, in other words, they wouldn't be able to find the truth just from looking at him. This had several advantages for Eugene, as this meant that Eugene could completely hide his progress in magic from higher level wizards. Lovellian had said that when looking at Eugene with magical sight, he didn't appear to be a wizard at all. This was obviously because he didn't have any circles. It also meant that even when he cast magic without using the ring flame formula, it would be difficult to detect the level of his magic. If they used the flow of his mana to estimate his level he appeared to be around the fourth circle. But when he used the ring flame formula, if you set aside which spells you're using and just look at how much power they hold you appear to be far beyond the fifth circle, Lovellian said once he had gotten over his surprise, they were currently in one of the underground laboratories beneath the Red Tower of Magic. The latest episodes are on website. Although Lovellian had been Eugene's teacher for the past two years, he had never spoken to or treated Eugene like he was a subordinate. This means that your first circle fireball is stronger than a fifth circle volcano shot. Lovellian sighed in awe. The tidal wave of mana brought by the ring flame formula was paired with a perfectly efficient structure and a swift casting technique. And finally, the lack of any incantation. No, wait, there was still something more. One of the many reasons the Eternal Hole was considered the pinnacle of the Circle Magic System the ability to store spells without the use of any seals. Even without using a scroll, it was possible to immediately cast a spell that had previously been recorded in your own sea of consciousness with this technique. There was also no need to call out an incantation in the process. This was no different from replicating the way in which dragons cast magic. 
I'm still limited to the fourth circle, Eugene said as he emerged from the black cloud of smoke. Anything more than that, and the spells won't come out of the eternal hole. The hole. Is my understanding of them still not sufficient? That shouldn't be the case, Eugene lovely and reassured him. Simply put, it's likely just a matter of limited capacity, because your ring flame formula isn't a perfect replication of the eternal hole after all. The eternal hole was a magic system that transcended the ninth circle creating a ring with infinite mana and then creating an infinite amount of circles within that. The present Eugene fell far short of that level. Sir Eugene, you're currently substituting your cause for circles, as you've reached the fourth star of the white flame formula. You now have four cores, it appears that it would be accurate to assume that the number of cores is equal to your progress in circles, lovely and estimated, though, the power of Eugene's spells was absurd for their level, lovely and continued, if we make a few assumptions this means that every time you reach another level in the white flame formula, your eternal holono, the ring flame formula will also become stronger, although only fourth circle spells could currently be stored. What if Eugene's white flame formula reached the fifth star? This would mean that his ring flame formula would be able to store spells up to the fifth circle. Though, they couldn't be sure of this just yet, as this was the first time such a magical formula was being practiced. They couldn't necessarily predict what unique peculiarities might arise each time Eugene reached another level of strength. But don't let your guard down, lovely and warned Eugene. Although the current ring flame formula doesn't seem to have any downsides some dangers might arise when your level increases. To ensure Eugene's safety, Lovellian had taken it upon himself to adjust the circle spells to better fit Eugene's unique magic formula. Lovellian sighed. Really now, as I get older, I seem to become even more of a worry what, when I should just be praising you for this, rather than hours of hearing how well I did. A short bit of advice is much more helpful, Eugene reassured him. Although I'm grateful for you saying so, Lovellian hesitated for a few moments before shaking his head. I've said this a few times before, but, are you trying to bring up your warning about me not using magic from levels above my own? Yes. If he was using the ordinary circle magic formula, there was no need to give this sort of warning. This is because circle magic was systematic and safe, in the past. Overconfident wizards had ruined their ability to use mana by trying to convert their existing magic formulas. But as the circle magic formula became more popular, the number of reckless wizards like them was greatly reduced. But generally, wizards of lower circles could not use the magic of higher circles. The fourth circle. No, there should be no problems with spells from the fifth circle depending on how many times you use them but don't try to use magic from the sixth circle lovely and cautioned. The ring flame formula might not be able to store these higher level spells, but it was still possible for Eugene to cast spells from the higher circles on his own. Moreover, his innate calculation speed and absolute control over mana allowed him to even cast higher circle spells with speed. Although this was an astonishing surprise, it was also rather worrying for Lovellian. It was impossible to predict what kind of danger would arise from freely using something that should usually be impossible to use. Thanks to that, Lovellian had had to abandon the sleeping pattern he had othered to for decades. It wasn't easy to change the existing circle spells to fit Eugene, but when he thought about the possible dangers that might arise when using higher circle spells, Lovellian couldn't help himself. When do you expect to finalize your thesis, lovely and change the subject? Probably before the end of summer so it should be finished somewhere around September. For now, my goal is to have it completed before my birthday, Eugene stated. Although he had called it a thesis written for his self-satisfaction, it had been of great help to Eugene in organizing all the knowledge he had studied and researched. You said you have no intention of returning to the Lionheart clan immediately, right, lovely and confirmed. Eugene nodded, yes sir. As there's no reason for me to head back right away, I'm sure that Jalid and Jehad will be disappointed. Don't they still have Cheyenne to keep them company? I'm sure they'll forgive me for being away for a few more years since it just means that I'm coming back a little later, that's all. Sile was no longer staying with the main family. She had left the main estate last year and had gone to live at the Black Lion Castle on Oakless Mountain. She had managed to become Carmen's squire just as she had hoped. 
but it wasn't like Sile had to stay there all the time, just this year alone, she had returned to the main estate for her birthday, visit, for a better Uso experience. An invitation to the party had arrived, but Yujin had ignored it, Shan and Sayo's birthday had been in February when Eugene happened to be so engrossed in his thesis that he couldn't spare any attention for anything else. If you aren't heading back to the main estate right away, where are you planning to go? Lovelyan asked curiously. Ice crabs are said to be a specialty of the Ruhr Kingdom. I've wanted to try some ever since I was little, Eugene hesitantly admitted. Lovelyan asked doubtfully, do you really need to go all the way to the Ruhr Kingdom for that? There are currently a lot of shops selling ice crabs on the streets of Aroth alone. Won't it taste a lot better to eat them in their home environment? Eugene tried to sound convincing. Of course, this was all a lie. Ice crabs. He had already eaten plenty of those pale king crabs during the winters he had spent at the main estate. I didn't know that you were such a gastronomist, Lovelyan said with surprise. Eugene reminded him, you know I've always loved to eat since I was little. I always thought that you just liked the big chunks of meat for their protein, Lovelyan trailed off thoughtfully. I like them because they're delicious, Eugene insisted. The Northern Rook Kingdom was the country that had been founded by that fool, Merlin. Eugene continued to work on his excuses in Ruram I'll be eating ice crabs, and after that I'll go to Nahama to see the Oses. The Oses? Lovelyan questioned, I've heard that Nahama's cactus scorpions are a delicacy, this too was a lie, two hundred years ago, Anais, who had been revered as a saint by the Holy Empire of Eros, had gone on a pilgrimage without even notifying the Pope of her intentions, after wandering around the world, she had been last sighted in the heart of the Nahama desert. It seems that you really like crustaceans, Lovelyan observed, to think that Eugene would go chasing after the cactus scorpions of Nahama once he had had his fill of king crabs in. Ruhr. How about we get some lobster for dinner today, Eugene recommended with a cough. 